Hey everybody, this is Jonah with Modern Tribe, and today I'm going to show you how to integrate the Events Calendar plugin with the Genesis Theme Framework. All right, so let me just briefly go over uh, what we're actually going to achieve. Um, we're going to work on setting up the main site navigation, so getting an events link in the main navigation and just briefly go over showing you how to do that. Um, working a little bit with um, custom page breadcrumbs. Genesis comes with uh, uh, breadcrumbs functionality out of the box, but um, some of it doesn't work too well with our plugins, so I'm going to show you how to customize that. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up some custom page sidebars, so um, if you want to have a sidebar for the calendar grid view, the list view, uh, single events, and stuff like that, I'll um, go into that a bit. Um, working with custom page titles because sometimes in your theme uh, in Genesis in particular uh, the page titles uh, might get messed up either on the uh, calendar, grid, calendar grid view or the events list view so we'll go into that. Um, skill wise you should be fairly comfortable with CSS, HTML, PHP and jQuery. You don't have to be a pro, but just have some basic knowledge or know where to look for uh, answers if you uh, have some questions. Um, and an intermediate knowledge of WordPress, so basically just a knowledge of moving around on the administration and familiarity with uh, different settings and things like that in WordPress. Um, requirements wise, you should be running at least uh, version 3 of WordPress. Uh, and version 2.0.5 of the events calendar plugin um, and version 1.8 of Genesis. All right, so let's first talk about your environment setup. Um, you should have WordPress installed. You should have uh, the events calendar and or the events calendar pro plugins installed. Uh, you should have the Genesis theme framework installed uh, and a Genesis child theme. If you're not familiar with child themes, I highly recommend reading up uh, just a little bit on them. They're fairly basic to uh, to get uh, up and running for your theme. Uh, and really all that they are is uh, kind of like an override or an extension of a parent theme. So um, if you're running the Genesis theme, Genesis has all of this code um, and all of these templates that it uses to generate different pages and uh, the styling and the content. Um, and what a child theme does is basically uh, allows you to make your own customizations outside of that parent theme. Um, so if you want to do kind of more heavy-duty code, which we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, with a functions.php file uh, to override certain functionality that Genesis has built in, or even WordPress for that matter. Um, and then more basic stuff like your um, your child theme style.css file, uh, which can um, you can implement all your own CSS styles in that file completely separate from uh, the Genesis core uh, style and code that it has. A few other useful tools to have are an FTP program unless you are using something like MAMP on a Mac for uh, doing local development. Um, your code editor of choice, I'm going to be using Sublime Text 2 but feel free to use whatever you want. Um, and uh, knowledge of or uh, just having used Chrome developer tools or something like Firebug for Firefox. Um, I'm going to be working in Chrome for the most part, and um, uh, you can access the Chrome developer tools by um, just right-clicking anywhere on the page. You can also right-click on like a specific element that you want to inspect and go down to inspect element, click on inspect element, and you'll be taken right to that element in the HTML for that page. And then on the right hand side, you can see all the styles that are being applied to that element. So really helpful when you want to make modifications to specific elements um, and you want to find out um, where existing styles are being applied to that element or what's being applied and how you can um, maybe modify that uh, those styles further. So you've got WordPress installed, you've got the events calendar plugins installed, you've got Genesis, Genesis installed uh, and your Genesis child theme so you're all ready to go. Um, 
get it all activated, get it all set up, and then uh, take a look at your website, and you should see something very similar to this. Um, this is just the uh, stock Genesis theme. Got the events calendar plugin installed, but I don't have uh, a menu link going to uh, the calendar page or anything like that. Um, you know, it doesn't look bad by any means, but um, we're going to do a few things, like I mentioned earlier, to uh, to spice this up a bit and uh, get a little more tighter integration with the events calendar plugin. One of the first things I want to show you real briefly, and I'm actually not going to cover it fully in this tutorial, um, are template overrides with the events calendar plugin. I'm going to go into Sublime Text 2, um, where I've got all my code set up, and Basically, what overrides are are um, uh, let me let me go into the plugins folder and then uh, the events calendar folder and then if I go into views, um, all the files in this views folder are um, the template files that are used by the plugin, and each one of them you can customize but you don't want to make your customizations right in um, the ecp page template.php file uh, for example right here in views if you wanted to make customizations to this the way to do it is to uh, make a copy of this and you can just copy paste um, right into uh, your child theme folder. So I've got my themes folder, there's Genesis, the, the main Genesis framework folder, and then I've got my Genesis child folder. And within that, uh, create an events folder. And then in that events folder, you can place uh, any of the views template files um, into that folder and make any changes you want to those files and then the plugin will use your changes versus the the core um, template views that are in the plugin folder. Uh, in addition to uh, the view files that you see right here, there's also in resources the events.css file. Um, so that's pretty important if you want to make uh, style sheet changes, CSS changes. Um, you want to make a copy of this file and then place it in that events folder in your child theme. Um, and if you're using the Pro plugin, um, the Pro plugin has its own views. Um, there's only three of them. So if you have the Pro plugin installed, you've got those additional views as well. All right, so I showed you the uh, homepage for the Stock Genesis website um, that we're working with. So let's uh, take a look at some of the other events pages real quick. And I'm just working off of the default events slug uh, for the events page. Uh, yours might be a little different if you've changed that in the settings. Um, but let me just go there right now. So this should take me to um, the main calendar grid page. and I, and. You may have this configured to show the list first, um, but if we just toggle back and forth, we can get to the list as well. Uh, but you can see here that the grid view, um, we've got, uh, it, it's not taking up the full screen, so uh, we're going to make that change so it does take up the full, full page. Uh, and then if I go into the events list view, um, this, this looks pretty good. Um, there's a couple things uh, like these buttons are, are getting cut off on the top and um, there's not really any uh, sidebar assigned for this particular page so we're gonna work on setting that up as well um, and uh, let's go to a single event um, and we'll do the same for us for the single event too uh, getting the sidebars set up for single events um, and we'll also like I mentioned, uh, work with the breadcrumbs. So we're on a single event and uh, it shows you're here. It's got the link to the home page and the title of our event. But uh, we'll throw in an extra link to be able to go right back to your main events page. I'm gonna go back to Sublime Text 2 because I want to talk about the functions.php file. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of work in the functions.php file. This is your, uh, this should be your uh, child themes functions.php file uh, and you should have pretty much the same code in here uh, and 
you don't need to change anything that's in there. Um, if you're brave, you can, but basically we're just going to be uh, adding code below any of the existing code that's there. Um, but the uh, the function's PHP file in general in WordPress uh, acts very much like a plugin where you can affect a lot of the code that comes with WordPress, um, different things that are executed in WordPress, you can change those in the functions.php file. Uh, and in addition, like I mentioned earlier, uh, making modifications to uh, functionality or code that's in the parent. Uh, so you can do all that stuff in the functions.php file. Let's go configure some settings in the administration just to get uh, some basic things set up with the plugin. Um, I've got my uh, WordPress administration uh, open here in another tab, and uh, I don't know if you work this way yourself, but I find it really helpful to have the administration open in one tab and my website open in another tab so I can do any of my admin work here and go back to the website tab, refresh um, if I made any changes, and see those changes right there so I don't have to you know, keep on um, opening a new tab or opening a new window um, when I make changes in the dashboard. So back in the dashboard here, um, if I go into the um, settings menu, the first thing I want to go to is the permalinks settings. Um, and what we want to do here is set the permalinks to use postname. Um, so all you have to do is just select that option and click save changes. So that's the first thing in uh, the settings that we want to change. Um, the next thing we're going to go into the Genesis settings. Uh, so let's go into the Genesis menu and then click on um, theme settings. And if we scroll down, um, we want to get breadcrumbs enabled on all the pages except for the front page. Check all these boxes for post pages, archives, 404 page, and attachment page. Um, and then scroll down to the bottom and hit save changes to save that. Um, by default, Genesis doesn't enable those options, so that's why we're doing that. Um, and the next thing, next settings we're going to change are in, back in the settings menu. We're going to go into the events calendar settings and change a couple things here. Um, and if you haven't noticed in the new version of our plugin in version 2.0.5, um, we've got a redesigned settings page with this really cool, really beautiful tabbed interface to access um, different settings panels for the events calendar. So that's really cool. Um, first thing we want to change is um, our default view for the events. Um, this option lets us set uh, whether when we go to our events page whether we're viewing the calendar or the event list. So let's set it to the calendar. Um, the other thing, um, you don't have to do this but it might make it easier just to go along with this tutorial, is um, to modify the events URL slug to events uh, and modify the single event URL slug to event. Then let's, uh, let's actually save our changes and then back up at the top, click on the template tab. And we want to use the default page template for the events template. Um, by default, you're going to have the default events template in there. Um, but go ahead and select the default page template, which is going to use um, uh, the Genesis themes page.php template versus the um, template that comes with the events calendar plugin. So select the default page template and click on Save Changes. And for all the other settings, leave them at their default. And that's it.